Wilson. Okay, like I said before, I don't think anybody's going to try to make this, so I'm just doing a quick once-over. Uh, it's supposed to be spider eggs, and I put the spiders in it. Here's the side of it. This is all spray foam. And I use a spray adhesive to put the fur on. This is all uh, spray foam. Spray foam, and then uh, I did some latex and painted it. Do, 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 do. Okay, and the, got all the spider legs. I got the idea doing it like this from Alan Hops because he did a tutorial. There's always little hops in my props, and uh, <laughs> and there's that. I got the girl perma blooded it all. The legs stabbing her in the side, and then I got the. Uh, cobwebs on both sides I think it turned out pretty good but I just wanted to do a, a real quick uh, go around because I didn't really explain how I did the whole thing okay that's good okay uh, I know you guys ain't, no one's gonna build this but I'm sure that they will uh, use the mech that I used to do it um, basically what I did was I got a, a fright props uh, bracket and motor and I put it on a speed controller uh, board right here and then I have uh, a cross brace and see what I did was what I did was um, I looked at the uh, the what do you call it okay and, and another thing I did was I got these brackets right here I had this bracket uh, in this arm that I had, they threw it away at work and I grabbed it, but you can easily do this out of wood, you know, have a piece of wood that come out and then uh, have a piece of wood that comes out with a screw to it. Or you can do PVC, you know, piece of wood and PVC, <clears throat> or you can just make you some L brackets and come out with the same result. And what I did was I uh, put a lock washer on here uh, so it moves freely like this. And then I come around to the front here, <clears throat> excuse me, and uh, I put a spring in it. Now the spring, oh crap, a spring is for once this extends all the way, it comes back. And that's what I did for the top. And I did the same thing for the bottom, but that the spring is going the opposite way because uh, so, uh, it's hard to tell. But I did the same thing right here. And I, but I have it angling down because that's the way the legs were. But then I had to put the spring on the uh, on the top and not going down because I wanted to help bring the leg up. If that makes any sense <clears throat> at all. And so what I did was I got this 100-pound uh, test line uh, fishing wire and I doubled it up. So hopefully that's like 200 pounds. And what I did was, uh, if you can see... I had a problem, a lot of problems with the arms coming out evenly and, you know, there's a lot of stress on it. So what I did was I used, uh, oh crap, let me get it. Had a little piece of steel that came out, put a hole in it. That way there's not as much pull on it and just drilled it right to the arm with the spring. And then I put the eye bolt so it would, you know, move more freely too. You know, whether it comes this way and get all tangled up, I put these uh, coming out angled with it. So, uh, you know, it'll pull smooth, smoothly because of uh, this. 
this uh, eye, eye hook is uh, doesn't have that little hook thing because this eye bolt <clears throat> doesn't have the hook part so for it to slide out it's like a solid piece and it's real smooth and it lets it move freely okay now to set this up you have to do it this way so what I'm going to do is bring the motor up to its highest point okay see the arm right there right there now it's at its lowest now it's going to come up to its highest and it will stop it now what I did was you have to do it this way just for it to move freely so I put the two I got the two high hooks down here too but in this position you put both of your strings in come through and let me get around the front and you set this to where how far you want the arms to open so right now these are both equally open the same on both sides now once you get that uh here you can get a better look at the, the mechanism like that I, had, I just found this piece it's not the same as the rest of them then i jb welded this because this arm will move okay so once I got them in the position that I want, then I tied the string to it and tied it real nice and tight to where the leg, like the legs come out this far. I just made the string long enough to come up here and go to that leg. Now that's going to be the opening part of the bottom legs. So then once I turn the motor back on, them two legs will close. Now that I have the Oops, shoot, let me get, let me move it around real quick. Okay, now that the arm is in its bottom position, then I do the same exact thing for this. You know, like right now, these arms open as far as I can, you know, as far as I want them to go. So then I hook the string to here came through here and made it sure that this was tight that way I know the arms are going to open and you have to do it evenly or this or the t-bracket will pivot side to side and the arms won't move freely if any of that makes sense but you can always ask me and I'll talk you through it okay now as far as the head goes I just spray foam the top of that and I had this straight uh, square stock. It's not very big. It's probably like three quarter inch square stock. And I put it in a vise and bent it down. You know, put it in a vise, hammered it, hammered it until I got the angle that I wanted. And then I just spray foamed it up in here and let it dry. And then and it was pretty sturdy. And then uh, these are just styrofoam eggs and stuff. I mean, styrofoam uh balls that I put up on top of his head because the spray foam looked kind of weird so what I did was I drilled through here right to the eyes each one and I put green LEDs in there and then spray foamed over it so that's what I did there and for the the pivot I just had this little bracket and drilled a hole through put the bolt in and that comes down and I put a weight on here you know for just so the motor didn't struggle so much like this and to get the head movement I drilled right through here into this arm I mean this part of the arm so that no matter what this goes the head's gonna go up and down as it's moving no matter what so the biggest thing is you got to make sure that the that this is square and make sure your line is tight when you want it to open. You know, just, I don't know. <laughs> and I put the eye bolts down here too to give the arms so it's more freely. This is loose right now because the arms are in a closed position. This is tight because they're open. I just put this here just to, so nothing would be in the way. I wasn't sure if I was going to... I got to put more fur up here, but I wasn't sure if I was going to come back here. So, but that's basically it. 
I know it's confusing, but if you guys need any, you know, help or uh, have any questions, you know, you're more than welcome to uh, help me out. I mean, I'll help you out. And I just put this spider arm in there, this extra one right here, you know, stabbing into her. And, you know, I got the tape up there so I can get the blood on her. And I just stuck fur on it. And I know you're not going to make this prop, but the move, the arm movements, you can do uh, many, a lot of things with it. Zombie arms or ants or whatever. Okay, that's about it. Well, and and I do have fur that goes up in here, so you don't see it on this you know, light coming through on the other side. But as far as these eye hooks go, you know, if I needed to, I put extra two by fours on the back. That's pretty much the setup. I didn't put an extender on this. I just used the bracket that came with it. All right. Oh, and I also and I also had these long uh, long ones out here, so it would be more. Uh, aligned with the with the the T brackets you know so when it comes down it's like right on it these I came out straight with because that's the bottom legs okay that's it honors for life listen